same in CalCon, so that one day there'll be a glass bottom boat that can go out there and look at them? Right? Isn't that what they're saving them for? Because no one has told me what they're saving them for, so that's what I think they're saving them for. The big glass bottom boat that's gonna come one day and we can all look at CalCon on the bottom of the ocean. Hi guys, thanks for coming out here. Free fishing trips. How are you? Good to see you. There you go, boys. Yeah, why not? You look like a nice young man. There you go. Okay, back to our movie. Okay, so. Oh, so once you figure out which way it's going, then you're gonna tack that way. You're gonna turn into the wind, because remember you got that kite. So you're, gonna, you're not gonna turn downwind. You're gonna turn into the wind and then tack back down. But back, I'm sorry, no. That's not what we were talking about now, I remember. Flashback, bro. <coughs> Timothy Leary. Nobody knows Timothy Leary? Am I that old? Wow, okay. Well, he made a little thing called well, we won't even say it. But it was a weird little thing he made. It was little, but it was amazing. Okay, sorry. So you got it in zero to 300. That's what you want to look at. You don't want to look at anything lower than that. Zero to 300. You're gonna drive along and you're gonna see a bunch of boomerangs on the screen when it's at zero to 300. If it's on auto, it's gonna be trying to ping the bottom. You're gonna run over a thousand bloop and it's gonna look like one of my thin little gray hairs. You're not even gonna be able to see it. But if you put the pedometer fish finding apparatus on zero to 300, a thousand tuna will look like my hand. You guys saw the pictures on fish dope. You know what I'm talking about. You gotta bring that bottom up for you. You cannot have the machine looking down there. There's nothing down there. We don't care if there was tuna at 3,000 feet. Be like, wow, they must be going somewhere. <laughs> They're not what we're looking for. You guys, you don't want to look below 300 feet when you're offshore. I don't care if you're fishing for Spanish mackerel, Wahoo, Dorado, Albacore. You do not want to look below 300 feet. Why? Well, you don't have enough bait. You're not running the independence with 9,000 scoops of bait and you can sit on a spot of fish that's 400 feet deep and chum till they decide to come up. You're 90% of the time you're on your private boat and you have only X amount of bait and you do not care about what's below that when you're on a kelp patty or you're out fishing tuna offshore. That's zero to 300. Now once you see the fish on the machine, go back to your GPS and mark it like you mark a fishing spot. Because what we found this year, what we actually saw last year, they don't move. Once that tuna finds that water it wants to be in, it hangs out there all day. 90% of the time we see it at 200 feet deep, between two and 300 feet. But we keep going back and forth. We keep grinding up the area. Every time we run over the dot on our GPS, we see them again. Now they went from 200, they're up to about 180. They're still not gonna bite, but we're gonna keep grinding it up and dragging that yummy fire back and forth across them. There were days where I drug that thing from six o'clock in the morning till nine o'clock at night over the same spot. I can't tell you how many times I went over it, but it was a lot. Because once I get past 20, I'm done. So. All of a sudden, they would go to 120 feet, and we get bit every single time. And I could tell my deckhead, get ready, get ready, they're gonna bite. And then all these explosions would happen back there with these giant bluefin trying to eat that yummy fire. Now, when they bite it, that kite's up in the air and it's got a clip and your line's in it. And when that pops out of the kite, he's got it. You turn the handle as fast as you can, but you don't stop the boat. You do not stop ever, not even for a second. But you don't, oh, how fast do we troll it, Dave? Eight and a half knots. 
why eight and a half knots? Because the guy that showed me how to do it told me to troll it at eight and a half knots. I don't know how he came up with that number, but it works. And so, you know, they told me to troll for albacore when I was a little kid and I knew everything when I was 19 and I was driving the boat and taking you all fishing. The guy that told me, he said, troll for albacore at six. Albacore, they're, you guys probably don't know what those are. They're like a tuna with these big long fins and they're really dumb. That's why fishermen love them because they're really dumb. They're not like yellowfin or bluefin. When you find the albacore, they really want in that white bag. They're willing to do anything to get in there. They eat wire with no bait on it. They're the dumbest fish in the ocean. That's why everybody loves the albacore. Oh, albacore, albacore, albacore. My dad's been fishing for a living since 1947. They, for years, thought albacore were garbage. That was the garbage fish. Now it's the most prized fish because most of you have never even seen one. You think it's like the Easter Bunny or the perfect woman. It doesn't exist. I just throw them out. I wasn't trying to offend you, young lady. You probably are the perfect woman. Woo, you gotta be careful. I had no idea I had so many women in the audience. Okay, not like the perfect woman. They're everywhere. It's the Easter Bunny. But the albacore are real, like the perfect woman. They're gonna come one day, they're gonna show up and they're super stupid. And you guys are gonna love them. And you're all gonna catch them. Cause all you do is take some line, you hook a bait on, you take some line, you pull it off the reel and then bam, you got one. You don't even have to know how to cast. What were we talking about? Bluefin. So once you figure out, you got a bite and you're hooked up. You saw the giant explosion. Now, you keep the boat in gear bumping it forward the whole time and trying to turn it down swell. Why? Have you ever fought a fish in the trough? It sucks. It's like this the whole time. So I try to turn the boat down swell so that everybody can enjoy themselves while we kill this thing, right? Okay, get the boat walking down swell. Now everybody's happy. Your, bottle, your, your glass of wine didn't spill on the carpet. Plus, it's walking that tuna up. Now we're fishing 200 pound braided line. And we're fishing 42 pounds of drag. Why? Because I can't make cable fly on the kite. If I could, I'd use cable and a winch. And I would just drag them in. Because I hate fish, I think they all should die. I'm sorry, I am not politically correct. And you know that, that's why you're here. If you got here on accident, I don't apologize. Bye. Okay. So look, if you're walking it down swell, if you have, if you don't have a 130 with 200, you got to have at least a 50 wide with 130 on it. You got to if you're gonna fly it on the kite, because no matter what you think, when you're at that cocktail party or at that bar or at your friend's house and you're telling the story that you think everybody wants to hear about how you fought it for three and a half hours and you go through all the details of how he poured water on you and how you had to drink three beers and how they don't care. None of nobody cares. All they want to see is the picture of you holding him. That's it. The story doesn't matter. We caught a 312 pounder on this rig, took 28 minutes. The rod does not come out of the rod holder. Why? Because, I don't know when this happened. Help me out, you ran a sport boat for a million years. When did people decide that fish were supposed to hurt us? <laughs> we're the dominant. We're the masters of our universe. And you want to fight a fish in a harness and have them hurt your back and your legs? No. This goes in the rod holder, and we kill him with a 65-foot hatteras. <laughs> because it's all about the picture, baby. And if you think it isn't, then you, you got to ask your friend to keep telling the story to you. Yes. You cannot use this in your trolling rod holder. The ones that lay down, that you have, that are laid down when you put your rod in there, it angles it down. It has to be a 40, a 90-degree rod holder. This goes in the 90 degree rod holder, swivel just like on Wicked Tuna. 
the same exact thing Paul does, I do. Paul and I did a bunch of seminars together a while back. I, unlike all of you, I don't know everything. So I listen to other people, and then I take it out, and then I perform. Three years ago, I didn't even know how to spell kite. 